بسم الله والحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين تري وير باك ات ستوديو والشيخ محمد سوسي شيخ محمد هاي هاي يو فيلين اكسلنت ما شاء الله عفوا فورجيف اس وي وي درين يو وي درين يو اون ذا سبجكت اي ثينك ذيس از ون اوف ذا موست امبورتنت توبكس نيد ان ذا كوميونيتي ذير از ا يونج برذرز اند سيسترز اور اني بادي جيتين ماريد most of the people are kind of thrown into the family unit without any prior knowledge experience training um and and nowadays people are going with these foreign ideologies and foreign understandings of how a marriage is supposed to be and all these fantasies and so on and so forth so it's been really really devastating and we thought maybe spending this amount of time and kind of uh getting an expert like you in the game uh <laughs> and and benefiting from all the, all the input and inshallah and all the knowledge many, that many people will tell you other <laughs> Uh, so glad to have this session is going to be different from the last two we did it's going to be more Q&A style we asked uh, the audience on questions that they would love to ask you and kind of to um, um, to benefit and so here are questions it's going to be from different topics it's going to be in and out uh, different categories based on what you guys wanted to know does the wife have to cook for her husband mm. does she have to cook for her husband okay the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam he said لو كنت آمرا أحدا ليسجد أن يسجد لغير الله لأمرت الزوجة أن تسجد لزوجها. Mm. And a lot of people take this hadith for granted, you know, mm. and it's a صحيح hadith, and they don't pay attention that if you are going to get married, you need to know mm-hmm. what your the rights upon you are. Of course, you need to know them in depth because it's a matter of success yeah. and failure in the akhirah. Yeah. Of course in this dunya prior to because yeah. every time what happens is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Whomsoever leads away from is a str- goes astray from my path and my deen mm-hmm. he will lead a miserable life now the further away you are the bigger the strife yeah and the bigger the uh, problems and the bigger the um dunk is going to be the the closer you are to Allah the smaller the dunk will be. Of course. And, uh, you know, the hardship and the, and the problems. And yeah. so, you know, and, the ad- and no barak and so forth. So we have to understand this is not something I'm saying um, to have the upper hand. This is not about the, you know, the patriarchy or, you know, uh, feminism. Or mm-hmm. This is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a lot of people think that, you know, um, shuyukh have made this up for hundreds of years to suppress and yeah. or oppress women. And they don't understand that you know, this is all in the deen of Allah. You can go read it. This is not, a, our deen is not a secret. No. Meaning that we have the imams or the mashayikh, they come up and say, قَالَ اللَّهِ قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ And where, where's the proof? I'm telling you, that's the proof. SubhanAllah. Like a lot of other sects do, or like they do in Christianity, they hide, yeah. you know, the, a lot of the book from the people. They don't teach, and they only teach, teach them certain things. Mm-hmm. We don't do that in Islam. You know, we don't have the right to do it. It's not pushed in the even in our mashayikh circles and so forth and so on. Yeah. So we have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed this in a certain way yeah. for a certain reason. Yeah. And if anybody has any issues with that on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, you can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't ask me. And this is what I teach my daughters. This is what I teach my wife. This is what I teach my sisters, my mother. Mm-hmm. You know, um, just not too long ago, just to kind of, I'm going to bring up a, an example. I'm not going to say what it is, is, you know, my mother did something towards my father um, that I thought was disrespectful. Now, this can happen to anyone. Of course. So I, I pulled her aside and I said, Mom, you have to understand that in the deen of Allah, this is not permissible or this is not good. And I don't want my kids, whom I'm teaching these things, look at you as somebody who's being disobedient towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So we give this nasiha to our mothers, to our sisters course, and course, so forth and so on for the sake of Allah. You know, nobody's out here to, um, to get over our women because w- people don't realize, especially... In the West, they don't look at the mother the way we do as Muslims. No. You know, the right of our mothers upon us is so great and so vast and so dangerous if we were not to fall into, uh, if we were to fall into um, disobedience towards our parents and, yeah. and our mothers, especially that the punishment is, is, is severe. So our goal is never to kind of disrespect or look at our mothers in, in a in a less or it's not that at all no on the contrary so having that said we really have to understand that could you repeat the question one more time i i, I so, thought i lost my train uh, of thought on that yeah yeah, yeah. so the, the the connection was you used that one hadith 
Yes. About so uh, with the wife cooking for the husband, wife cooking for the husband. The so I'm gonna bring this up because yeah. there, uh, there's a lot of the mashayikh today yeah. that are actually coming out and say, oh, she doesn't have to cook for him. Yep. Subhanallah. Okay. She doesn't have to do this. So what is she gonna do? Yeah. I'm serious. Should I go get a cook? Should I pay somebody to cook for us? as a family <laughs> and then she can just sit on the couch all day and watch uh, you know musal salat or what, what i mean what's uh, yeah. well she I'm works too that's a different story now if she works and you work every time for the men your wife is out there working she's taken away from your qawama she's taken away from your manhood mm. she's taken away for a percentage of the decisions that need to be made in the house this is a fact and some of the mashaykh said in order for your wife to work and you permitting her to work she should pay you a salary which is the deficit that she creates by not being dutiful towards you in those eight or nine hours that she's out taking care of somebody else Ajib. most people don't know that and i believe in that uh, you know but i would never do anything like that if yeah. i can't take care of a wife i would not marry a wife and that's period because the prophet ﷺ said um, whomsoever is capable of taking care of the family financially and physically yes. of course you have to be mentally up there yeah. then that's what they should do mm. okay so coming back to this is should the woman cook Akhi, I think we touched upon it in one or two of the other podcasts that yeah. she's not cooking for me yeah She's cooking for herself first <laughs> Akhi, what is this disease about she the, does she have to cook for me? Yeah. And that's why I tell people, don't, you know, don't have any children the first two, three years. If you're going to have a problem with your wife about this, don't marry her. Let her go deal with some American. If she wants to live that life, yeah. let her go work and live at Pizza Hut and eat the garbage out there and not cook. Akhi, the people who are millionaires today, they are cooking for their families because they realize that they should cook healthy food. Mm -hmm. And then we have the Muslims are debating this. This is not a man, this is not a matter of debate. This is a matter of su adab. Yeah. To say that I'm cooking for him. Akhi, don't cook for me. But then you don't eat either. Mm, all right? Yeah. That's just the way it's going to be. Yeah. Then we can all stay making siyam and we can lose 50 or 60 pounds. Everybody will be happy. Yeah. But <laughs> let's, I mean, if a woman, and we discussed this, if a woman has two or three children, yes. who is she cooking for every day? Yeah, she's cooking for her kids. Akhi! Her, yeah. So uh, is it, you know, so if the man is, is a qawam, الرجل له له القوامة التامة على زوجته that the man has the utmost um, the word I'm looking for that you know a, as a caregiver over his wife mm -hmm. is a caregiver over his wife and that's why mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the men are the caretakers and the caregivers of women yes period now every time you play with that and oh she's gonna work oh she's gonna have her own business oh she's gonna help out mm. then that balance starts to get lost and then you start to share responsibilities once you start to share re those responsibilities the financial ones that's where we start hearing all of this nonsense a lot of this came uh, you know from some some muslim countries this whole story started because we're out there working just as well once the woman is outside the house working, you can expect to hear a lot of this garbage. I'm mm. sorry, I call it garbage. Yeah. You know, because if a woman doesn't want to cook for herself and her kids, or she married this man so he can cook for her, that's a different story. And we're, if you if he likes that, more power to you. Enjoy it. Yeah. But the woman is to be in total submission and obedience as a Muslim woman to her husband. Mm. So if he tells her to clean. That's an order that you have to be obedient to. I did not make the rules. I'm just telling you. Messenger. This is it. Akhi. You know, so the ulama said, This is a problem. How is she supposed to be obedient towards him? Yeah. And she doesn't even want to cook for him. And we understand even here in the West, today, women are talking about I want to cook for my man. That is actually so special that you cook for your man. You cook for your children. What do you want to do that you, why is this such a problem that a lot of women say, I don't want to cook for him. Akhi, don't cook for me, but at the same time, don't eat. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, I get really irked up about, <laughs> should I cook for him? Or should I, you know, as a man, and I, I'm, I want to make wasiyah to all you men out there, work two jobs, don't let your wife work. 
It's one of the biggest problems and why we have this, this fighting and this issue that the woman is out there working. Once she thinks she does not need you, You're done. she starts coming up with all of this stuff. And not needing you is according to the kuffar land. Of course. Because after 40, when you've already had two or three kids and you start to look like you're 50 because you've spent the last 20 years working at a job and they suppressed you, they took away your youth, and now you look like you're 50 at 40, you're mm -hmm. lucky that that man's going to stay with you. You can say whatever you want. The women are buy one, get one free. If she doesn't want to stay, you can go get two other ones for free. I'm telling you, Achi, today, <laughs> Zawaj al a woman has a good job. She has a good income. She just wants a man to, she wants to hear the key come through the door, she says. And that's all. I'll take care of everything else. I'll pay for it. I'll cook. I just need a man to come in. And even if it's once a week, I just need to know that when I cry over somebody, it's a man. You can see that's weakness. You can be strong. You'll be strong. You'll be a feminist. You'll get a dog and you'll die alone. Mm. Cook for him if you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Sheikh, another question. Is there such thing, This is a little, we, we're going backwards. Is there such thing as halal dating? The word dating means that you, a man and a woman, go out and just do whatever, have fun together, yeah. dinner, yeah. whatever. Yeah. If you want to call, you know, a halal reunion is mm -hmm. when the man comes, he asks for the hand, he can come to my house, he can be in my um, living room mm -hmm. with my daughter. We're not sitting there, you know, we're chaperoned, it's an open space, and they can discuss and get to know each other. Mm -hmm. Dating does not work. It doesn't work. Period. Yeah. Even the kuffar now came to the th it came to the conclusion that dating only accentuates you fall in love with somebody and then yeah. them leaving you with a broken heart. Yep. Because ninety percent of the men today, I'm I, I'm telling you, sisters, even Muslim men, I'm unfortunately, men are not in it for long haul marriage. A twenty year old, most of the time, if he's not coming through the door, he's coming through the window. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, mm -hmm. Come through the doors, to the homes through the doors, not through the window, not through Facebook, not through Instagram, not through garbage, not through the phone. And if you are fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He wants you and He likes you, He will come and ask for you properly with His family and your family. You can get to know each other if it works out great. If it doesn't, you don't have a broken heart. Every time you go out with a man, and like we discussed the last time, if you remember, I said, it's like a piece of a, a white cloth. Every time you let somebody in, it's like a drop of black ink that is, is not going to come out. Even if mm. you try to wash it, we'll always have it's, um, it, you will always have that stain there on that white cloth. So the pure mm. you keep your heart by not getting involved in dating. Dating does not work because both of you are lying to each other. Oh, that's even if point. you're honest, yeah, even if you're honest, it's your emotions. Mm. They only see the best in the person. That's why they say when, after they get married, after 20 years of being together, like we mentioned. Yeah. Because when you're together in haram, shaitan, he makes it so beautiful. So you're like, oh my God, I'm infatuated. Oh Allah, you know, I don't make it not to say, oh my God. Yeah. So everything that's coming from w displeasement of Allah is going to be beautified by the shaitan in your evil soul because that's what you want to happen. You want to have this white knight that's going to come and sweep you off your feet and you're going to be so madly in love. You get married and you're instead of having shahr al-asal, you're going to have shahr al-basal. That's what's going to happen. Mm. Dating does not work. And they are already discussing that and talking about that in Kufar land right now. Of course. <coughs> if a man doesn't disclose, uh, the, the, the fourth question, if a man doesn't disclose to a woman that he marries, uh, that he is currently married, making her a second wife, may she seek divorce if she finds out. Mm. He doesn't tell the new one. It's his right to marry without telling Okay. his first wife, okay. first of all. The second one should know. Okay. And she can divorce if there's a hardship that happens from that. Mm -hmm. Because if she doesn't know, he's not going to give her her full rights. Of course. So that's a problem. Yes. So the first one may not know. Yes. Okay. That's his right to marry a second or third or fourth or all of them together if he wanted. And yeah. that's his right. Mm -hmm. The issue with the second one is there. there's no way of him fulfilling his rights towards her as a wife without her knowing that he is with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if he's doing that in some sneaky way, Akhi, yeah. she should. It's better. Yeah, I, and I don't recommend. Akhi, if you're going to go get married, do it right. Be a man and do it right. Yeah. If you're going to do it in for whatever reason in secret or whatever it is, 
the f you do want the second wife to know for sure. Of course. Because you're not going to be with her as much. Of course. Or, and she's going to find out. And if she's going to find out, yeah, you're a liar. It's just not going to go well. Achi. No, it's but not. But these are some of the things that we have to be very careful about. A lot of times we take, you know, we take the secretive approach with this weak beta male approach. Don't do it, guys. Don't like you know, lekum uh, you know, lekum wa alaykum Like we tell the sisters that they have to be obedient to you. You have to be a man that's worth being obedient to. That's true. Don't be this sneaky, conniving lizard, achi. Nobody likes that. Men don't like it, and men and women hate it. Yeah. The the two things that women hate so much in men are lying <laughs> and being uh, stingy. Mm. If you're honest and, and have karam, you can go a long way with a woman. SubhanAllah. But nobody teaches our kids this stuff. No. Somebody tell them, oh yeah, go marry in secret. Go marry this one. She has five kids. Akhi, a lot of the stuff that we're doing in the ummah today makes ta'adud look bad, makes you look bad, makes the beard look bad, makes Islam look bad. To Muslims, before non-Muslims. Don't do it, akhi. Do it the right way. Do it the right way so you have barakah and yet you're, you can, you're not walking around with your head down every time thinking, oh Allah, well, who's going to find out about this? Oh man. Don't do that. SubhanAllah. Don't do that. Uh, um, if I have a nikah, do I need to notify the whole community or just keep it between my family and hers? You do want to have some people know about the nikah. So when you're outside in public and you're, people, know. people know that you guys are together. Mm. Usually we can tell if there's a married couple or not. That's why we have a walima. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Awlim walaw bishat. Do a walima only if it means one um, one sheep. So the walima, even like in Malikiyah, if my memory serves me right, um, al walima wajiba, that you have to do a walima for mm. people to know about what's going on. Mm. And once again, if you're, let's, there's some circumstances that don't allow to, to let the whole world know. Yeah. Um, and, and, and maybe we get away with some of the stuff in America or in the West because everybody's minding their own business. Nobody yeah. cares or looks for somebody else. That's true. But there's going to be that one day that you're walking in the mall holding on to this guy and nobody's going to give you the benefit of the doubt mm. or vice versa. Of Especially a lot, people do this in their second marriage. Of course. And somebody's going to see him in an airport or someplace <laughs> that they're thinking, nobody knows where I'm at. Uh-uh. <laughs> They're going to see her and like, oh, he's and nobody's going to say that's his wife because nobody heard he was married in secret. So we should we should do Walima if it's not the close, close. I mean, it, at least extended family. Yeah. You know, not the five or six. And the khutuba can be in secret. Mm -hmm. The khutuba, the the um, asking the hand. engagement. Oh. Keep that a secret mm. because that might not work out. And then we are we don't fear Allah a lot of times in what we do. Oh, yeah, we get engaged and then somebody gives you hasad or the evil eye or whatever the case may be or sihr, whatever it is. And then you guys end up rupturing. And then after that happens two, three, four times, people start to talk in the community, falsehoods without fearing Allah, oh, this person, something's wrong. Four people came to her to make, uh, you know, khutubah mm -hmm. and it didn't work out. So your khutubahs, your, uh, you know, I would only really, really tell people, the close ones, of course, they're going to make like a little party, a little khutubah. Once you're ready to do nikah, let people know. Let your sheikh know that you married so and so. Yeah. You don't. They don't have to call them over, no. but just let the word spread out because yeah. we got nothing going on except for gossip. So yeah. once you you let a couple people know that you should know a couple people that anytime you want to spread something, you just let them know and it just and it will take the place. Yeah. They'll do the rest. So it's you should know lot. somebody now. It's your sister, your mom. You maybe perhaps oh. you know have this uh, this ibtila. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to preserve us. Okay. Sheikh, uh, the fifth question, what are ideal qualities to look for in a potential spouse and what things uh, should one not compromise on? That's a good question because we've, um, I, I, I set up some stuff here for this, okay? Um, I want to go back to that first question that we said, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, if I'm going to ordain or order somebody to, or, to make sujood to anyone, I would have the woman make sujood to her husband. Mm -hmm. So I need you guys to understand something. We all know, we discussed here in the first podcast, and we've discussed you, you, everywhere you go, the rights of your parents upon you. Mm -hmm. Dear sisters, I need you to understand that the rights of your husband upon you supersede mm -hmm. in multitude mm -hmm. the rights of your parents upon you. Once you leave your father's house, your husband has the right to tell you to not visit your father. Mm. I'm not saying he should no, do no, that. No, no, no. He has the right. 
Yeah. And he has the right to say, I don't want this man to come to my house. I don't want your brother here. I don't want your cousin here. That's his right. If you cannot fulfill those, then go marry a white boy convert and don't marry a Muslim or whatever it is that somebody that's going to do whatever. I'm, you guys, you need to listen to me and understand that this is the deen of Allah. And we've deviated so much away from the deen of Allah that we're not ready to hear qala Allah, qala Rasul And I'm not talking about, there are so many extreme cases, akhi. Mm -hmm. There are some ulama that said that the woman is a lesser of than the man. Mm -hmm. This is an extreme position, but it exists. We're not talking about that. We, wanted, we want our women to be queens, but you have to submit to the king. This is all we're telling you to do. In the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us to do. Akhi, let me ask you something. When we say that Allah, the Prophet sallam said, if I was going to order someone to make sujood, why didn't he say to make sujood to your father? He didn't mm -hmm. say make sujood to your mother, whom have the hugest Huge. and, the, and, and the biggest of rights yeah. after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. He said the father, uh, he said the husband. Yes. This is a burden. I was talking to a sister who uh, was married for like three or four years. She said, Wallahi, if I knew these rights, I would have never gotten married. I've made so many dhunub in the last four years with my husband that if I die, I'm going straight to hellfire. Mm. Nobody talks about this. It's this funny. woman had two master's degrees, Akhi. She wasn't like this girl that wasn't educated or anything. Mm. She was studying the deen and she started noticing. And I got involved in this. I was involved. And she told me this, Akhi. Mm. So I want you guys to understand is please know what your responsibilities are. Your rights will come because you're going to be asked about your responsibilities. And I guarantee you if every woman does her responsibilities according to the deen of Allah, Allah sofa you fi dhalika zawj. That husband will be like Plato in her hands. Not because she's a manipulative, salita uh, lisan, uh, she's an evildoer, she's going to uh, put uh, black magic in his uh, food, so she, he mm. loves her the most. No, because she fears Allah and him. And the Prophet ﷺ, he tells us that, القلوب بين أصبعين من أصاب الرحمن يقلب كيف يشد that the hearts are in between the two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he transforms and changes the heart in the way that befits him. So when the woman is looking to please Allah and she's making qiyam and she's asking Allah to have the heart of her husband be coming towards her, loving her and being, you know, import, that she's important in his life mm -hmm. and you're doing what Allah wants, حاشا لله يعني أن يضيعك. Allah will not let you down. No. This We are playing, oh, I'm smart. Oh, I read a book. Oh, I've been with 10 men. I know who men are. You don't know who men are. If you were out there dating in haram, you know what the shaitan men are. You don't know what men are. That's you so don't. Funny. You just don't. You will not benefit from a marriage, from a husband, until you submit to Allah first, who's telling you submit to that husband. Because if you want ma'ind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alayki an tuti Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Period. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to my daughter. I make these podcasts for my daughters. I'm not making it for anybody else. If somebody benefits, alhamdulillah. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I, this is for me. This is what I'm teaching my daughter, akhi. Yeah. You know? So we uh, coming back to that, and uh, alhamdulillah, this is kind of coincides what I'm talking about. You, you, you women need to understand. Allah, this is an ayah that people don't, like, doesn't exist in the Quran. Like, we never heard of this ayah. Yeah. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say لِأُمَّهَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِ كُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ الْأُولَى So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقَرْنَ فِي بُيُوتِ كُنَّ وَلَا تَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ الْأُولَى هنا Allah رب العلماء said وَتَبَرَّجْنَ تَبَرُّجَ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ الْأُولَى that they used to not wear their hijab the proper way that they used to wear the hijab and you can see their sadr this wallahi akhi and i've read Tens, dozens of tafasir, looking for something else that my heart was not um, was not satisfied with that answer. Mm. Mm -hmm. Until I found someone who said, التبرج هو الخروج من البيت. And I was like, الله. Subhanallah, wa hadha aqrabu ila qalbi wa fahmi. This is what I understood. And I was hoping, التبرج هو الخروج من البيت. ما معنى هذا استاذ؟ التبرج. ولا تبرج لا تبرج الجاهل الأولى and do not do like uh, تبرج meaning is do not leave the home exceedingly and for no reason and just to go out to the supermarket just to go out shopping just to go out هذا هو التبرج 
Okay. وجاء تبعا إنه العري. This is something else. The tabarruj. That's where this word came from. Is to expose. expose okay. When a woman leaves the house, she exposes herself in totality, and she puts herself in vulnerable situations. Somebody could rape. Somebody could stab, somebody could steal, somebody could beat, Seduce. somebody could yeah. do something bad to her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the Prophet and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying this to the women of Umayyad. the Prophet Muhammad oh. meaning that no one can marry. Everybody would kill for and die for. Mm-hmm. We always use the word kill, but I mean die for. Please, you guys. Yeah, uh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of shooting and it's like all about killing in my mind, all right? Um, so we say Ummahat al Mu'minin. Famabaluk Yani who are less than those women. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another verse he says وَإِذَا سَأَلْتُمُهُنَّ مَتَاعًا فَاسْأَلُهُنَّ مِنْ وَرَأِي حِجَابٍ no. If you're going to ask the mother of the believers and then the mother of believers are like the top Peak. or the the um, the optimal example that we should follow. Yeah. And so Allah when he's talking to them that means he's talking to everybody beneath them which is my daughter, your daughter, you sisters listening to me. That's who Allah is talking to. If you're going to ask them something, ask them from behind a curtain, a hijab. So when you knock on the door, don't throw yourself in the door like this, like a lot of people do. Sabah al khair. Good morning. Shu good morning, Hadi. When you knock on the door, you need to step back and turn your back away from the door, so you don't see what's inside the house. Subhanallah. It's a fitna. You can't do that. So because a kid might open the door by accident really quick, and the mother is inside without hijab. Yeah. That's a possibility. Of course, of course. So you, you knock on the door slowly and then you step back and you give your back to the door. Have an adab. This is how we do this is how we knock on people's doors. That's true. And we don't come and knock and ring the bell 20,000 times like somebody you know, they could have a heart attack out of fear. Yeah. Of Sallam taught us how to knock on the door with the t- with the tips of our fingers three times. If you're told to go back and or leave, this is pure for your heart, then leave. Yeah. So we, we, we don't read the Quran. Akhi, we need to understand when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَرْنَ فِي بيوتي كُنَّ Anytime you're leaving for not a necessity, you're disobeying Allah. Forget about me, Akhi. You want to disobey Allah, enjoy. Because the Muslims don't understand that their, their strife is not with me, mm. the husband. Mm. It's with Allah. Allah said, you don't, you, want, yes, you don't want to obey me and you want to go behind my back. You want to steal from me, bimala yurdillah. You want to talk about me, backbite me, um, you know, just kind of say, he's talking in, some, in this day and age, this guy's talking some nonsense. This guy's it's nonsense all the way to Jannah, inshallah. If you want to come with us, great. Because if what we say is supposed to please the kuffar, then we're probably not speaking Islam. No, no. We're speaking kuffar. No. And this is the problem. We can't, we're point. living in a kafir society that has made these norms Islamic. And Muslims, what do they want to do? They want to take a, a square peg and put it in a, in a circle. And they want to shove it in there so bad. They want to oh. find all the points that feminism or kafar talk about and Islamicize them. Mm. We can't listen to musiqa. Why not listen to nasheed? Mm. Why not? And let's have all the men in the background. Hey, 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 <laughs> Sing it, Akhi. Who cares if you stay without musiqa? I'm just telling you. Who cares if you stay without ice cream? Who cares if you stay without a car? Who cares if you stay with one or two hijabs instead of 10,000 of them? And vice versa. Who cares if you stay with a car without? Akhi, you need to understand hadi dunya fania. If Allah gives you more power to you, do it in, which, in the way that pleases Allah. Mm-hmm. Huh? Don't give everything and open your hands in totality that you will be um, regretful. Yeah. And don't hold back everything. Don't hold so much that you're stingy that when you die, they're waiting for you to die. Subhanallah. So we have to understand, women, please understand. This is what Allah wants. This is not Muhammad Susi. Wallah, you guys can write me off as a nut. But go back to the kitab. I dare you to go back to the kitab. I dare you to go back to the sunnah. Just Google what are the rights of men upon women in Islam. In Islam, not in feminism, not in kuffar, not in West. In Islam. SubhanAllah. If you say anything other than this, then you know, come and debate. Yeah. You know, so we have to understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he talked to, uh, about Jannah, he said, wa, uh, wa ya Adam uskun anta wa zawjuka al-Jannah. Ya Adam uskun anta wa zawjuka al-Jannah. Mm. In another verse he says, فَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ إِنَّ هَذَا عَدُوٌ لَكَ وَلِزَوْجِكَ 
about who? <laughs> about the shaitan. Yeah. Okay. What did the shaitan say to him back? Ya Adam, hal adulluka ala shajarat al khuldi wa mulk la yabla. The first one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Adam, live you and your spouse in the Jannah. He didn't say Hawa. Allah has shown us that Allah is talking to the man or the male or the protectors of women and that this is so sacred that Allah doesn't even mention her name. But yet you want to put your name on your chest so everybody can read it. When you're out there, you want to have your name on your chest in a gold piece so everybody can read it because it's important for the world to know your name. Or it's important for you to look in the mirror and, oh, this is my name? Because you didn't know your name. Allah forbid you forget it. You must have amnesia. Mm. Uh, you know, who people put their names on. Yeah. Akhi, like for me, on my phone, I put Ummu Fulan. I don't put my wife's name on the phone. Mm. I just don't. I don't mention my wife by name to other men. I just don't. I'm a crazy nut. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm telling you what I do so you understand, Akhi. Yeah, and she's probably oppressed and poor her and make dua for her, inshallah. If you're able to make qiyam al make dua for her, inshallah. But before that, remember yourself and make dua and say, Allahumma shrah li sadri lima tuhib wa tarda. Oh Allah, open my heart to that which you love and want and you will be pleased with. And then maybe you, Allah will throw something in your heart that that nut, Muhammad Susi, he told you something right. Yeah. Wallahi al -azim. So Allah is talking about وَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ اسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ And then he said, فَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمُ إِنَّ هَذَا عَدُوٌ لَكَ وَلِزَوْجَكَ Allah says, be careful that the shaitan is your enemy. Ya Adam. Allah in another verse, and the shaitan, even the shaitan. You see, this, is what, this is the twisted part. Akhi, today, they taught us in business. Find who the decision maker is in the house before you make your sales pitch. Mm, that's true. A lot of men today, they go to buy something. when Instead of them saying no, they don't have the goal or the, the manhood to say, I'm not going to buy. Oh, I have to go ask my wife. They use their wife as an excuse. So we mm. know, my, go ask my wife means they have an objection or they're not going to buy. Mm. And then we say, we ask the men straight out, who's the decision maker, you or your wife? Well, she's the boss. Then we should not be talking to you. Can you put the boss on the phone? If she mm. makes the decisions, then you can go home. Mm. I don't care. I need to make a sale. Okay. You know, this is yeah. in business. Yeah, Once yeah, again, yeah. It's not, I'm not talking about Islam. Yeah. So I'm telling you, but th things have gone so backwards that even the shaitan, he knew that Adam was a qawam, mm. alayhi salam. And I apologize for not saying alayhi salam. Yeah. So every time you say al, 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 al nabi sallallahu alayhi salam, you say al anbiya alayhi salam, you say al sahaba radiyallahu anhu, and you say al ulama rahimahumullah, yeah. because they are at a higher status and level and that we um, yeah. respect them, inshallah ta'ala. So I apologize for that, inshallah. So the shaitan, what did he say to Adam alayhi salam? He said, Ya Adam, هل أدلك على شجرة الخلد وملك اليبل? Can I lead you and show you to the everlasting tree that mm. will give you everlasting life and will give you everlasting power mm. and kingdom, in the kingdom, the forever kingdom. وملك لا يبل That you will remain a king, you will not die and remain a king forever. forever. MashaAllah. Huh? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Mm. That he cheated them and he lied to them. Mm. I swear by Allah. Adam alayhi salam did not know that somebody could swear by Allah in lying. <laughs> Subhanallah. Come back to what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He said, That means Adam and his spouse, Hawa alayhi salam. Our mother, they ate from the shah. They both ate from it. Mm. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَصَى آدَمُ رَبَّهُ فَغَوَى He didn't say, فَعَصَى يَا رَبَّهُمَا فَعَصَى آدَمُ لِأَنَّهُ آدَمُ is responsible. كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ Allah created Adam to be responsible for his spouse. That's why when, when they the both yeah. did the ma'asiyah, Allah, he addressed Adam. Because Adam is responsible for his spouse. Mm. So understand what Allah created, why he created, and how he created. So it's not hard for you to say, Inni akhafullah. The, the nature of Muslims is to say, Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we obey. Ala tool. I'm not looking to follow. Akhi, every single kafir in this dunya that's saying men and women should be equal is going to hellfire. There's no doubt they can be nice, they can give sadaqah. If they die in a state of apostasy or not or of not Islam, of they're going straight to hellfire. Do you think that the one leading them is the Al-Malaika, is Jibreel alayhi salam? 
or is it the shaitan? Mm. So all these ideologies that are coming from kuffar land, they're all ideologies of the shaitan. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So um, I'll, 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 let's leave that at that, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll probably talk a little bit more as we go. Yeah, no, Sheikh, you, you, you really touched on a lot of key important points there. Uh, too many, too many gems in the, on 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 the last uh, cycle, and another important. Uh, uh, point. I think you asked about what are some of the characteristics of, of men and women. So I wanted yeah. to so establish that men and women. You set the foundations. The there. foundation. So is what there. are things that I should not compromise on, and okay. what are things that are some of the qualities that one should look for? Beautiful. Okay. Subhanallah. I'm uh, like I told you guys last time. I'm listening to this non-Muslim. Been listening to him about six months. Yeah. He's in the black community, um, and he talks about these things from a sociological standpoint. Mm. Some have Christian backgrounds, but a lot of it's just dating doesn't work. Yep. Um, you know, people need to get married if they want to have proper children. People should marry from their race to continue on their race. They talk about those types of things or whatever it is. But I'm just kind of letting you guys know that a lot of people are speaking up against the feminist movement yeah. in one way or another. Yeah. And these are non-Muslims. Of course. And the, most people that are taking this feminist stuff and just swallow it and just like Without thinking. drinking it, drinking the Kool-Aid, they're Muslims, Akhi. SubhanAllah. I dare, you know, and I'm not saying this, I dare a lot of Muslim Imams to go on here and say, no, it's, it's I probably rare. won't spend the night at home. I am very sorry. He probably won't. She will lock the door, change the locks, and it's over. SubhanAllah. And we've heard of examples of this. The no, man right. talks and he just gets a beating on it. Yeah. You can't say the sister has to wear proper hijab. You can't say that the men will lead the prayer and the women will stay in the back. Not because they're second class, because they are protected. Mm. Akhi, Allah did, we have not seen a woman lead in prayer from the time of the Prophet up until just 20 years ago when it happened in California. Mm. Yes. It's, yeah. it's gonna fall in the it's gonna fall in the sea pretty soon in the ocean because <laughs> it's 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 a cursed piece of land. Yeah, and that's why I didn't want to go live there. So, but coming back, a woman needs to understand that the more she is obedient, the more she is disciplined in her respect towards her husband. So you want to have respect. Yes. Okay, and respect is not. In his face, you pretend, and then behind his back, you break his back. you're playing him. Oh. Or you're saying ill things about him. Once again, I need you guys to understand. I tell my wife all the time, the, the ahad, the covenant between you and I, dear wife, is that I fear Allah in you. If you want to take that covenant, you will lead a good life. If you want to play games behind my back, I وكلت عليك الله سبحانه وتعالى. I have I've left you to Allah, mm -hmm. and if Allah سبحانه وتعالى will not be merciful towards the transgressors, mm -hmm. no. you know. So respect, أخي, and the respect needs to be in His presence, and when He's not there, mm -hmm. you don't smile to Him, and then when you meet up with your your mother, mm -hmm. oh, He's you know. It, it, maybe all of you know the the story of Ismail عليه السلام when Ibrahim came to his house. Yeah. Ibrahim, and this is a very good example, you know, and, and look at the two wives. One of them needs to go and one of them needs to stay. Mm. And this is, we're not teaching this young man. No. Okay. Young men are like, I'm stuck for 50. You're not stuck, Akhi. First of all, come and learn what it means to be a man. If you're going to get married and the woman doesn't want to do her part. Yeah. Okay. Move on. Yeah. No. Akhi, the most, the, the most uh, abundant resource on earth today, mm. after water, is women. There's plenty of them. All you need is one good one. You're not looking for billions. No. There's 7.8 or almost 8 billion people on the face of this earth. Do you think you can find a good one? You need to get off your bum and start working. Yeah. You'll attract. You just have to be successful. You attract somebody to yeah. you. Of course, of course, yeah. And of course, we're talking about doing your part and being yeah. a good man and making dua and being yeah. a qawwam if you have to work two jobs. So coming back to this, you know, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he came, he knocked on the door. His his um, son Ismail was out hunting or out gathering food, provision. 
And a lot of times they go for a week at a time. They go into the desert and they don't come back. And he knocked on the door and the, she didn't know who the old man was. And it was Ibrahim alayhi salam. And he knocked on the door and he said, oh, how are you uh, guys doing? Oh, we're, we're living misery and, you know, we don't eat but every three days. And, and look, my husband's not even here. Shakwa, 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 complain, 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 complain. Mm. So what did the, uh, he say, alayhi salam? He said, when your man, when the man, Sayyiduki mm. Yaud, mm. Today we don't say your master. Oh, Allah, master means slavery. It doesn't. Mm. In Arabic, the word my master is the utmost of respect. Honorable person. So, and Sayyidi really doesn't mean master for you guys. I know somebody's going to run with this so hard that they're going to hit the, the, the foam and they're going to go through the cement. And, you know, mm. I, and, and when we, like for instance, in, in, um, in Northern Africa, when we see an older man, we say, Ya Sayyidi. Of course, and yeah. it doesn't mean my master. It means elder, oh, respected, yeah. uh, honorable. It's more like you know, like to say the honorable John, so and so, or yeah, whatever. So yeah. that's the, really the best word for it. Okay, so he said, send you know, give your husband the salam for me, and tell him to change the mat of his house when he gets back. Mm. Mm. She came, when he came back, he said this old man came. He gives you salam and he sends to change the mat, you know, that welcome mat on the front of the door mm -hmm. that we have. Yeah. This is a metaphor for the wife. He said, to change, he said, that was my father and he told me to get rid of you. Go back to your family's house. He divorced her. Mm. So, okay. Ajib, yeah. This is This Huh? So he told change. Why are you dealing with this woman? Yeah. How can a woman complain about Ismail alayhi salam? How about you and I, man? What's yeah. going to happen to us? Subhanallah. So we're learning these lessons. And then he came back another time. He found a wife and she said, Wajadnah bi kulli khair, walhamdulillah, and we're doing good. And she praised Ismail alayhi salam. And he told they told her uh, when he comes back, tell him that you know this old man sa gives you salam, and he says keep your keep the mat that's in front of your door, keep your wife. This is mm. what that means, okay? Mm, and doesn't mean the wife is a doormat or none of these nonsense, you know, words that the, you know the kuffar use or somebody might twist my words, okay? Yeah, yeah. So this is a kine. It's a metaphor for the wife. Yes, the respectable wife. Yeah. All right. So having that is respect, appreciation, achi. You know, today is. Because women work, um, or they come from a well-off family and they've had everything, they didn't live in poverty and misery, no, yeah. it's hard to please them. It's, mm, that's a very good point. You're 20 years old, Akhi. Yeah. She comes from a family, her father you know, was well-off, or you yeah. know, she grew up, even the last two, three years, she has a phone, Akhi, she has everything, she, she has, has a everything. car. Uh, what are you good for? What are you going to add? What to the are, table? What's uh, right now? You can't add anything. Yeah. You can barely afford an apartment. Yeah. So you might go out and just do something that took you a lot of time. You painted a, a painting with her name on it, and she's just like, "Oh, thank you." That breaks the man's heart, you sisters. Mm. If, if I had a whoop for every sister that did that, I would be rich, Akhi. Wallahi, you could buy a woman a house now. You know, mm. Sheikh Farouk was. Uh, was telling us about this man who bought his wife a car. And she's like, she didn't get excited over that. Oh, I'm gee. serious, Akhi. Oh, know, yeah, sometimes you want to do the, like, get the awe factor from your wife. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. And you buy her like a vehicle or a house or something. And yeah, and it's okay for a man to buy a house without his wife being there. What's wrong with that? Oh, she's going to, I understand. She's going to live in it. You want, But some men are good at those things. Mm. A lot of men have no clue what it means to what an ki open kitchen means and what what an open roof means with rain coming in the house. Then he mm -hmm. should take his wife to help pick. Yeah. But some there are some men that are capable. So when we're talking, we're we're talking about men who are capable. Of course. There's men that know how to dress. They know how to do you know the cologne, the shoes. They know what women's shoes are. They know what pumps are. They know what high heels are. They know mm. all. There's men out there that know this kind of. I know they're not many, but there are they're out there. Mm -hmm. So having that said is, you know, this whole appreciation, show appreciation. Don't take it for granted. You mm -hmm. know, if the man brings it up once that he doesn't feel appreciated, that means he's he has a thousand times he felt not appreciated. He's only going to bring it up if he's stabbed in the heart and he's bleeding. Yeah. 
and you don't know he's bleeding. That's yeah, that's a great point. Show appreciation. If you want to succeed in your marriage, show appreciation for every little thing. Mm. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Wallahi, I remember an elderly couple back home. I'm not going to say who they were. And I've seen them. You know, the, the man will bring something home and the wife will take it and throw it and say, what did, this is garbage. What did you bring us? And, you know, this is crazy. So, and the last thing is, is that we don't get enough of as men, especially good, honorable Muslim men, is praise. Mm. You think you praise your, you should praise your kids a lot? You sisters, if you start praising your husband, your life will change. First of all, there's the power of the spoken word. Of course. Okay. And you have to understand, the more you tell them you're doing a good job, you don't lie. We don't want you to lie. There's plenty of good that could be praised without lying. Hey, I like the way you dress. I like the way you're sharp. I like your beard. Whatever it is that you like about him, praise him. You know how the sisters come, you know, come to us men. And we're sh we have our shortcomings that we don't express our love. Yes. Okay. And we're ignorant about the love languages. And we've discussed this many times. We don't know if she wants you to vacuum or she wants you to buy her house or she wants you to buy her a rose or if mm -hmm. you want her just to say, I love you. Or a lot of times, guys, just sit there and listen. What is she? Shh, shh, shh. Listen. She just wants to talk. She doesn't want your opinion. She doesn't want you to give her solutions. She just wants you to talk. That's true. She has 20,000 words. She only got out 10,000. And from 9 to 10 p.m., you're going to just sit and listen to the other 10,000. Just listen to it. And then you, you should ask, honey, do you want me to listen or do you want me to give you a solution? Because men are solution oriented. Yeah. So as soon as you start talking about, oh, my friend had this divorce or this with her husband, she might be so freaked out that, you know, that they're divorcing, that that's projection onto her, that she just wants you to say, honey, I will never think about that you yes. and I are like this so that's the Prophet used to say to Aisha oh subhanAllah you and I are like a tight knot mm. and she would ask how's the knot and he's like tighter than ever <laughs> you know and we don't say these things this is not just wrong you guys need to learn how to be romantic Akhi, wallahi the things I'm telling you sisters is not to um, belittle you or to say that the men the men need a lot of work too and i promise you whenever i catch them anywhere they're getting it everywhere ask ask najib ask anybody here everywhere we go hey you need to be a man you need to be doing this you need to straighten up you need to be the kawam you need to go out there and make the money you know you need to not be stingy you need to do this we talk about this stuff all the time all the time so if i'm focusing more on the sisters uh, the the sisters they're the foundation of the relationship that's true and the, the point I wanted to make is if you praise him, a lot of we're not used to this. We're not raised with it, men or women. Mm. But sisters, listen to me. Every day a woman wants her husband to say, I love you. You look beautiful. No. All right. So what do a lot of men do? She comes and she's in a crabby mood. Oh, you don't love me no more. What does a man do? What do you mean I don't love you? I work all day and... <laughs> She just wants you to say, of course I love you. You're the love of my life. I can't live without you. Mm. And she's going to be so happy. But a lot of us are dumb. We're ignorant. We don't know. That's so so we start rattling a thousand things because we're logical. Well, I did this for you. I did that for you. I did that for you. Yeah. She just didn't hear I love you today. Same thing, sisters. We, especially as Muslims, and I think I mentioned the first podcast that our parents were never loved, never told. Nobody said yeah. I love you. They yeah. were never appreciated. We all live that. We all have this praise dilemma. But it's a lot easier for the sisters to do it. Teach your men by being an example. If you tell him you love him a hundred times and you can get him to say I love you once, alhamdulillah, we're already on track. He just, sometimes it's like cotton mouth. He cannot say it, akhi. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know some elders that they did not start saying thank you to their kids until after they had grandchildren. So they start saying to the grandchildren, then they're like, every once in a while you're hearing, hey, thank you. I'm like, oh, where'd that come from? So even <laughs> as a son, you're like caught off guard with like, my dad just said, thank you. Oh, man. My dad just said, oh, that's a good job. So I'm, I'm you s sisters, praise him. 
praise the more you talk good about your husband the more you're programming your subconscious in whatever you program your subconscious it's going to deliver back to you so in, if you nag about your husband and say negative about your husband that's all you're going to have because that's what you're speaking it's it's the power of the spoken word Akhi. it's very mm. powerful what we say it's if powerful. you know like if you say your kid's a loser it's exactly what he's going to be. Your husband's a loser. It's exactly what he's going to be. Mm -hmm. So you have to be, you know, know these things and praise and praise. And I'm telling you something. I understand. How much time does it take to learn a language proficiently if you put your effort in? 10,000 hours or so. Six months? Six months, yeah. SCD, take it as a new language that from now on you're going to praise your husband for every little thing that he does and learn a new language. In six months, your life will be better. Mm. Guaranteed. But do it for the sake of Allah. Do it for the right things. Don't lie. Don't try to manipulate your husband. Manipulation comes across. And be careful because you're dealing with Allah. You're dealing with a Muslim that is making sujood at night that's saying, Allahumma mm, li zawji. Allahumma ghfir li zawji. Allahumma ghfir li kada. Zawji huna, my husband, wife, or husband or wife. No. Making dua for each other. So this is, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentions the, the, uh, in, in, um, in Surah Yusuf alayhi salam, he says, وَأَلْفَ يَا سَيِّدَهَا لَدَ الْبَيْبَ Allah, he calls the man a sayyid. Hmm. The man is a protector. He is a, um, is an honorable person and, and so forth and so on. And when he talks about that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that. And we said many of them, you know. And one last thing, we're going to talk a little bit more about this probably in the next half an hour, is Umm darda she used to say, Qala Sayyidi. Mm. My honorable man or my master, he said this. And once again, the master is not the good word, you guys, but, you know, it, it just gives thing. status. It just gives good status uh, for the man and, and so forth. It doesn't take away from you guys. You guys, it doesn't. When a woman, the more you are in your feminine, the more you are in submission. And women today, and modern women, don't want to be vulnerable. Mm, yeah. I don't, I don't need a man because she doesn't want to be vulnerable. Mm. And a lot of this happens because women got into relationships that are not halal. That's so and true. men took advantage of them. And when they went to work, they took advantage. The woman was only brought out of the household in the past 50 years to be taken advantage of. And here's the problem, sisters. If you look at what are they saying today? Oh, you can be like a man. Why? You never see men saying, I want to be like a woman. So why do you want to be like a man? If the patriarchy is bad, why do you want to be like a man? People don't understand every day. You know, it's like if you're into electric cars, everybody says, it's just like a Tesla. The Tesla was first to the market. They're ahead of everybody and so forth and so on. It's just like Tesla. So if, if the men are so bad and they're so evil, why are you competing with them? Why mm. don't you go do your own thing? And, and we've already proven. We don't, nobody wants to have a womb. I mean, we're talking about some crazy people that do. Men don't want to be like a woman. No. So why do women want to be like men? And Allah didn't create you. And Allah is not going to ask you. Mm. And we're always talking to Muslims as well, you know. So Umm Darda, she said, we used to say, Haddathani Sayyid. So Umm Darda, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the wife of Sayyid Ibn Jubayr, radiallahu anhu, um, she said that we used to address our husbands, mm. like you address your, uh, your your princes and your leaders, um, leaders and your your senators and your presidents by uh, sir mm. so, and this is out of respect you know um, and we used to say you know aslahak Allah afak Allah may Allah protect you may Allah um, forgive you this is what they used to say to their husbands mm. you know like we mentioned last time and I'm going to close this and you can ask another question mm -hmm. that Who, who should be so, somebody that a young woman should be more loyal to the, uh, more than anybody in this world before she marries? Her father. Her father. I can tell you. If a woman is not teaching that daughter how to meet in submission, love and caring to her father, mm -hmm. how is she going to go and do this at her husband's house if she wasn't taught this? Mm. 
and, and we say فاقد الشيء لا يعطي The one who doesn't have something can't give it mm-hmm. You know if your glass is empty You can't fill somebody else's glass So if the mother is not teaching the young daughter at an early age That daddy is like the utmost You know he's the best thing after ketchup mm-hmm. You know um, you know, like he's he's the top of the top He should be respectful, should be thought of She's telling the daughter Pick up the phone and call your dad Send your dad a message, I love you But that means she would have to be doing it first Of course And we talked a little bit about this last week The more you are running And pleasing And putting effort in To let your husband know that Hey, I'm thinking about you, I respect you, I love you The more he's going to want to do for you SubhanAllah of course. And this is what women don't understand. Mm-hmm. Oh, he has to love me first. Enjoy. It's not going to happen, you guys. And when it happens from us, you don't want it. Because the men who are chasing women are not loved and wanted by real, strong, or good women. So it's a catch-22. You want the men to do this, but then you call him a beta male. Mm. And if he doesn't do it, then you're like, okay, you're too dry. You need to do it. You push your men out there to become leaders. If you are a strong woman and you're smart and you realize that you married a man that, ah, he's not as courageous, he's not as smart, or, you put him out there. Push him out. Not not show that he his deficiencies. Do, don't ever show a man his deficiencies. Don't ever put him down. You're married. You have this man right now. Try to put him out there. Yeah. Try to show him things. Teach him. And never show him that you know more than him. Don't it's very him. important. You can know more than him. The vice president knows more than many of the presidents we've seen. Of course. But when they go on TV, they dumb it down a little bit. And of these course. are men. If men can do it, women should do it. And once again, that was your fault that you married that man and he was weak or did not know much as much as you. So you have to deal with that right now. And if you get to the point where you cannot, then you should ask to split in peace. And that's why we recommend don't have kids for the first two to three years till you get to know each other because a separation without kids can, is going to be with a clearer vision. Yeah. It's going to be easier to deal with. Of course. And it's going to be... It's going to be a lot better, pure for your heart and pure for your your mind and everything else. Subhanallah. Um, Allah Ta'ala. That's so true, Sheikh. Sheikh, you touched on a lot of different things relating to to, um, to uh, marriage and family and so on and so forth. Uh, how how What's the best strategies for maintaining one's marriage? Mm. The maintaining of anything. Yes. We t- like last podcast, we said, check the pulse, keep it alive. Oh, yeah, okay? that's very important. Yeah. How do you keep the maintenance of your vehicle proper? You do the oil changes when needed. Yes. Right? Get the gas when it's needed. <laughs> well, don't, don't you know, my father, if he, if he drives my car and it's under a half, yeah. I'm going to hear a, a, an earful. That's so true. If it's on a quarter, <laughs> you know, he always says, keep it above half because yeah. there's a lot of the, you know, residue and dirt and stuff that sits at the bottom. That's so true. And, and it's, it's the more you dry it, you drive it to dry close to E. Yeah. Um, the, the worse it is for the engine. Oh, man. So this is just simple maintenance stuff, you know. Yeah. Check your tire pressure. Yeah. Your windshield wipers and your windshield wiper fluid. Your brake, fl- especially if you're driving a car that's two, three, four, five, six, seven years old. Five, six, seven, eight years into marriage. <laughs> you need to check the pulse, keep it alive. The most you- important thing that keeps a union together is intimacy. That's only something you mm. can give to your spouse. Male or female if that is not in the marriage you can have a respectable union but you're not having a good healthy marriage mm, you can it. be respect yeah without intimacy and men go crazy achi. so this is very important if you the first thing you want yeah. to have in a marriage is to make sure that the bedroom is proper Yes. It's on track. If the bedroom's not on track, That's it. you're going to have so many problems from that. That's so so a lot of times you have strife and you don't know why. Yeah. It's probably the bedroom is not proper for either. Yeah. Sure. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahun. Akhi, we love our women. You guys need to understand. We don't want you to be less. No, the more you are in submission to a man, a real man, the more he's going to adore you. You want the extra gold. You want the extra attention. You want all these things. Praise him. Listen to him. You know, the FBI is what? The fit, beautiful, inspirational. Mm. Feminine. Feminine, beautiful, inspirational. Mm. You have to be feminine. 
And feminine doesn't mean that you, whenever you get upset, you start to yell or you have a loud voice. Feminine yeah. means you have a lower voice. All this can be taught. Yes. All this can be can changed. Be yes. Everything can change. If they can make a lion come from captivity and stay, you know, become domesticated and all these dogs and animals, yeah. a human being, min babi awla, that they can lower their voice, they can train themselves to be better, they can learn another language, they can they can be more, fi- you know, more feminine. So true. Beautiful is not just your body. It's not that. The character. It's you Ahlaq. take care of yourself. إذا, إذا that the woman that is desired by men is when he looks at her, he is pleased. This means that you have to be on top of your beauty. Mm. If you're willing to do it when you go to a job, you should be willing, you should be wanting to do it 10 times more for a husband or a spouse. Akhi, this is what, look at the kuffar. Mm. Before they leave the house, they take two hours, Akhi. Of course. They work yeah. out, they do their thing. They, uh, by 6 a.m., sometimes when we're sitting at the coffee shop after Fajr, Jessica comes in, Akhi. She's, her hair is done, her makeup's done, she's dressed. I know she just didn't do that in the past 10 minutes. <laughs> she just spent two hours doing that. Yeah. And her hair is wet because she took a shower and it's from the gym. Yeah. We notice these things, you it's know. Wild. So we have to understand that when our women don't do these type of things, it makes you look lazy. I, I'm telling you, mm. when you don't do these things, it makes you look lazy. And a husband hates a lazy woman. Mm. Just like the woman hates a lazy man. We are, I've been talking about this throughout the podcast. Yeah. Get off your bum and work. Yeah. Nobody can take away the fact that you're working. It might not be the best way, might not get the best results, but you're at least out there grinding. You have to grind, Akhi. Of course. You have to grind. Of course. Sheikh, uh, when you're in the community, a lot of young brothers um, want to get married. Want to get married. Those who are married, they say, uh, talking about the intimacy thing, that when their husband, when their uh, wives, and you know, there's some type of argument or something that happens between them, the sisters use the bed as a, as a punishment mm. for for their husbands. No. What are your thoughts on this? And then she's, she's, she's very gonna, common. And she's gonna have a bed in hellfire, uh, waiting for her, mm. if she doesn't make tawbah to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, mm. and that's because she knows. Once again, women have become so complacent and they've become um, so comfortable that yeah. she knows the man's not going to leave her. Akhi, if that happens once and you go marry somebody else, that will never happen again. Mm. And I say something that's super dangerous and I want you guys to listen to this and listen to me carefully. And this is my opinion. It's not from any ulama or shaykh. So if this comes back, comes back and bites me, it's me. Yeah. This is my personal opinion, yeah. um, it, it, and it, it's from my experience in this life, and it's not from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's just an experience I'm going to say, okay? Of course. I found that there are two things that if you really want to find out who you're married to in her family, you'll know when you have a divorce. Interesting. Divorce your wife or your husband, and you'll see who you're really married to. Until you divorce them, you're not going to ever know a lot of times who they really are. Interesting. Because, and I'm saying this, I'm not saying go divorce your wives, okay? I'm telling you, you'll know for sure. Yeah. Who, you know, there's people that are transparent and you'll know, and, and don't get me wrong, but I'm saying a lot of times, because we become so mani- uh, manipulative and yeah. we lie, cheat, connive. This is becoming like some um, of the characteristics of, of Muslims. Um, lie, lie, cheat, connive. Lie, cheat, connive. That a woman, you could be with her for 10, 15 years and it's not her true identity. And the same thing with the man. It, there's a lot of craziness out there. So I'm saying you'll know for sure. And that's why I'm saying I'm not saying to advocate or to divorce, but I'm saying if that ever happens, You'll know because if they the, uh, that family starts to speak ill about you, mm. or you start to speak ill about them, then you'll know who's the bad person. And if you both do it, then you des- you're just a match made in Jahannam. You're both evil, <laughs> you know. Right. So the woman, the Prophet ﷺ said, "Whomsoever a woman that her husband calls her to bed and she has no oblig, uh, you know, s- no objection, meaning uh, she doesn't have her um, menstrual, yeah. um, she's not uh, sick, genuinely sick." Yeah. yeah. A lot of women, they play, I'm sick, and they put, are you playing with the deen of Allah? 
Allah knows if you're sick or lying. Yeah, of course. But then the other problem is, she'll say, no, you can't marry another. Okay, so if you're sick, let him marry another. Let him divorce. No, he can't divorce me. I'll take the kids. He can't marry another. I'm going to take him to jail. He's not your prisoner. Hmm. Fear Allah. This is the problem. I'm talking to Muslims. If people want to act like the kuffar, Allah's going to make their life miserable. How many women are going to be so lovely and so enjoying their life after 10 years of marriage? Let's say they married 25. From 35 to 70. That's 35 years that she's manipulating her husband. And she knows that he doesn't love her and he's just waiting for Malik al to take him or her or both of them. Do is, is, you enjoy it? Is that enjoyable? No way. Is that, is that something that every woman wants? That Doesn't a woman want a man to sincerely love her? Of course. And be willing to die for her? Of course. So, and we've seen a lot of craziness that m women hold their men hostage because of the qanun that's out there, because of the laws that are against Allah's shara. If you use the laws of outside to suppress your man, Allah is going to make your life miserable. Mm. And this is this is the problem that people understand that they're dealing with Allah. If you say I'm Muslim, you're dealing with Allah. Subhanallah. If you're not Muslim, then you don't listen to us. We're crazies. Don't listen to anything we've said. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But if you're a Muslim, listen, listen carefully that the malaika will curse that woman that is playing these games towards yeah. a husband because she's pushing for zina. And zina is one of the gravest sins after a shirk billah. That's very interesting. You and say people that. don't listen to this; they don't understand. And then don't blame him when Jessica's out there. Is like, oh, you're such a nice guy, Muhammad. Oh, you fast every Monday and Thursday. Wow, you're so pious, Masha Allah. They're catching on. They're coming for your men. I said it last week. Yeah. This is gonna, this is happening. We've seen a lot of Muslim men now. What do they say? I'm just gonna marry a non-Muslim. I'm gonna marry a Christian or Jew. I don't want to deal with the Muslims. It's too much headache, costs too much money. Is that what you sisters want? Mm. Do you want it? What do you want? If you fear Allah, you will win. If you don't fear Allah, you will lose. Even if you think you're winning. Because right now the kuffar think they're winning. Yeah. Huh? They think they're winning? Well, they think. How long are you going to live? And for every woman that disrespects her husband and she does uquq to her husband, She's going to wait for her sons and daughters to make uquq towards her. Because they see that. The kids, they grow up, they see oh, yeah, that they you see are that. making taqsir towards your husband and they will neglect you because that's al jaza' min jins al-amal. Subhanallah. Allah put that husband, he is a priority over your father. He can make your life so miserable in the deen of Allah. But because you're living in America, and we're not saying the man, I said he could. He could tell you not to visit your family. I'm not saying it's right or yeah. he should or shouldn't. I'm yeah. saying he could. Yeah. You know? But the men, are, you guys can't take the deen of Allah and you want the deen to submit to the secular laws of the West. I, billah min billah. I say many people, many Muslims in the West, they want um, Islamic, Islamic benefits with Western lifestyle. <laughs> Islamic benefits with Western lifestyle. It just doesn't, doesn't Allah go Rasul. Fear Allah. Yeah. And, and obey Allah and His Messenger. That's it. If it's you turn your backs, Allah doesn't want the disbelievers. Yeah. You don't believe. You don't. You don't um, um, follow and obey Allah and His Messenger. You you've left Islam. Subhanallah. And I just say that as a broad connotation, and it's special for every single one. So nobody says he's making takfir for everyone. You know. Sheikh, uh, there's a rise of brothers now who are making some really really. Um, Detrimental things to their marriages, and they're going up to their wives, telling them to pay fifty percent of the, fifty percent of the of the of the uh, household uh, bills, and so on and so forth. Hmm. What are your thoughts on that? And this new movement. Allah, you know, this is the this is where things become flipped upside down. Once again, yeah. If the men do this, yeah, and they're expecting their women to pay, yeah, they're not men. If you want your wife to pay, you're not a man. Period. You got to hear that, yeah. I'm telling the sisters, yeah. don't marry these bums. Wallahi, sister, if you want to, you know, somebody's going to come up to me and say, well, who's going to be the doctors? I hear this argument all the time. <laughs> who's going to be the female doctors? 
sisters, I need you to understand. There's a small, oh, the ones that are out there that are successful, that are doctors, that can do it and don't need a man as much as many other sisters, meaning they can be, you know, they can, their career is their lifestyle. They might not want kids are very small percentage. They've always been a small percentage. And those are the ones who go willingly knowing that if they become a doctor, they're going to have to give up a lot of the marriage life. And they sacrifice that. Mm -hmm. And they know that up front. And when they marry somebody, they know it up front. But this sister, for instance, who is a doctor, could be a, a great second or third or fourth wife because she doesn't need to be there all the time. Yeah. She just needs to have a man and her husband. But she has another cause. There's nothing wrong. Those women will always be there. Yes. So stop this dumb argument of who's going to be your doctor. There's a lot of kuffar, especially in America, that are female doctors uh, that are doing, you know, way more than the Muslims anyways, because we're a small percentage in the West. Yeah. So let's not have this as our argument. Yeah. Who's going to be this? Who's going to be that? There's plenty of them out there. No worries. If you're having trouble, I can help you find a female doctor if you want. SubhanAllah. So the men, coming back to the men. Yeah. It's not his right to ask you to work. It is the right of our women to stay home to be taken care of financially, to be protected, to be respected, and to be priority in our lives. Mm. That's because Allah said, sure. Now, he didn't say, الذكور. He said, yeah. the men are the protectors of women. He did not say the males. So for these males, that these are the beta males that are out there saying, I want my wife to work. He's only sending his wife out to a fitna. SubhanAllah. Okay? And to be honest with you, Akhi, to be honest with you, I don't I don't get the fact that a sister can go out there and work. I don't care where it is. And she's talking to Muhammad and Ali, they're Muslim brothers, of course, or on Facebook. And and I'm just okay with that. Yeah. I'm not. Mm. And the other thing is that I'm telling you sisters that are married or looking to be married, get off of social media. Social media is for losers. Social media is for losers. Mm. And if you think everybody's on it, it's only us third world country people that are on it by 80%. The regular people out there, second, uh, you know, second class and, and above, it's only 56%. And a lot of them do it for certain reasons. Yeah, They're not out there every time they go out to dinner. They're making money on social media. We're making people money. Uh, somebody goes out to dinner. They take a picture. Oh, they're doing the fish face. The <laughs> shaitan face, you know, and they're p slapping it on social media. SubhanAllah. And Allahi, this is what the kuffar are saying. If your wife's on social media, go find another wife. That's what the kuffar are saying. Ajeeb. And I understand you could be in a very tight niche, just your brothers and your this, but still, Wallahi, it's a bit for fitna. Well, You're going to get that fitna. thing that says, hey, sister, remember me? We had that biology class back in 2016. <laughs> and that day you're fighting with your husband for whatever dumb reason. And you need somebody to vent to, and you re you respond to that request, mm. and that request will take you to hellfire. And we've seen more than one example. Uqsum lakum billah. I've seen this happen with many people, and even people I know closely that I was involved with, that were married, and this happened to. And I aqsam to billah, because you have to be careful. The shaitan will send his um, soldiers upon you day and night. The more you open the door for that shaitan to come in, the more doors you open, the That's more it. doors you're going to be able not to close. So, and social media is one of those big doors that will lead you to hellfire. Allah's not going to ask you, why weren't you on Facebook? Allah's not going to ask you, why weren't you on Instagram? It's Allah's cool. not going to ask you, oh, why didn't you do this or do that? Allah's going to say, why did you expose yourself? Why did you talk to that person behind your husband's back? Why did you do this? Oh, he's just my cousin. Your cousin is not a mahram. So the people that you can't talk on the phone with and you don't have their phone number and their name should not be on your social media. You? But if you're out there, if you're out there in public, anybody can come in and knock your door. If you're sitting in a glass house, anybody can see what you're doing. Of course. So social media is for losers. If you're out there and you're doing dawah and you're doing something, and, and the very specific case for the men, but the uh, most of the women... There's no way for them to be on social media in a way that pleases Allah. It's most tough, women. Tough, yeah. And I'm not saying all women. I said most women. Listen to me carefully. And like I've told you guys, I've listened to quite a few sisters. I don't have any problems with women. On the contrary, I like a strong, educated woman. But she has to be in submission. Yeah. 
the more in submission and feminine she is, the stronger she becomes. العرب. العرب that said her strength is in her weakness, is in her femininity. The strength of a woman is in her weakness, meaning that she's in her feminine. Not that she's weak, that she can't do. No, women can... They're, it's proven they're getting a lot better grades than men they're good at studying they're good at hard work and somebody's going to come up and say and I will let you ask the next question why or what do we go to school for you go to school to be educated so you're not a jahila you're not a rock that has nothing underneath it or above it mm. you're going to school so you can sit and help your kids and raise them properly of you're course. going to school so you can teach your kids another language you know how to read and write you can read you can read a paper in psychology and understand what it means that's why we talked about you need to have a bachelor's or minimum of a bachelor's to be successful in, in this day and age because there's so many things out there you need to know for instance you parents what does it mean to vaccinate your kids what is the anti-vax vaccine movement you have to know that so you make a proper decision not because this doctor who was a rabb al muqaddas said this is good and we do it and we're like sheeple oh yeah let's get a vaccine i'm not going to say if i'm with or against vaccine that's not what i'm talking about but the more educated you are the more you are able to make choices that are educated choices of course and this is why our sisters go to school that's why we go to school of course anybody need to be educated. Actually, i have a business that had nothing to do with my school i could have done it without ever going to school Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, yeah. so i'm just saying you your 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 job and your sustenance and your rizq could come from somewhere where you uh, second grade uh, education is enough yeah. and there's plenty of those people out there so it's not to get a job if you're doing it to get a job you don't even have the right reason Okay, we're about to close. Okay, good. Yeah, we're good. Sheikh, um, closing statements. This was a really deep discussion. Some of the fawad. I'm going to rewatch this session here, even though I attended it live and really, really type down some of the fawad take notes. and the benefits. Tell the sure. sisters, please take the stuff, take the notes. Yes. This is hundreds of books yeah. that I'm, I'm giving you guys the zubda to zubda yeah. experience, being in the middle of marriage situations, you know. Yeah. Achie, I'm telling you, being yeah. married for years, and, and I'm just yeah, in counseling with uh, whether it's in the with the mashayikh, whether it's in different countries, whether it's here, yeah. this is like this is la crème de la crème, like they say in French. <laughs> and yes, you have to speak three languages at least. Yeah, speak you know English and in whatever your native tongue is. If you're, for instance, Somali, you should be it, speaking Somali, yeah. and then maybe Spanish. Take on a third language, Arabic. The more languages yeah. that you take up. The but more, the, the smarter you're going to be and the more open-minded you're going to be. Of course, of course, of course, for sure. So in closing statements, Sheikh, uh, definitely I'm going to be taking notes of, of, of this session and the last previous two sessions. But many of us, we don't have this relationship education. Unfortunately, many of our parents don't give us proper education. They're mainly, some are excused, some are not excused for it. But what can people do to get educated relationship education-wise? Okay, this is why we say you have to have a bachelor's. Okay. Go read a book. I, I, I've always recommend the five love languages. Okay, that's a good book. Right. Okay. That's a good book. Why? It's going to teach you how to even, what your love language is. Okay. So when your husband brings you a flower and you want him to vacuum, you're not mad. Okay. You know, if your that's husband's good. love language is words of affirmation or personal touch, you need to touch him all day like you do the baby. A lot of women, they, they get married, they have a baby, and then that becomes their love. That becomes her little master. Yeah. I call him the little master. Yeah. <laughs> because she has him, she's loving him, and they neglect the husband. Yeah. And the husband feels left out, and he's That's like, so what? and he doesn't know because he's clueless. He yeah. doesn't know that she's getting enough love from this baby. That's true. So, like, this is a very good book just to read. That's Go do book. the personality test and see who you are, what you are, what makes you click. You know, if, if find out and talk to your spouse. Do the test together. You guys, do more of the... Communication, communication, communication. I can't stress it enough. Oh, yeah. If you have a problem, communicate about it. Yeah. Just communicate, communicate, communicate. And we wanted to do like some examples, and uh, the time is not going to permit at all yeah. about you know what you would say and how you would respond to this, and maybe in future podcasts we can slide this in somehow. Is yeah. you know how you can respond to your husband or to your spouse is very important. You know, the the lower your voice is the more in control you're going to be of the situation. Of as soon as the voice starts to raise, it doesn't yeah. matter from who, or rise, yeah. I should say, yeah. the more it, there's going to be a problem in that. But the woman can regulate because the, the woman can be the man's thermometer. Ajib. 
and she can she can boil it and let him like flip yeah or she can calm it down and let it go down and and not boil as much mm. and most of the things we fight about they're not worth fighting about la fi din allah not in the deen of Allah or yes, in the dunya, dunya stuff. No. If you live without a car, you're going to be just fine. You have to understand this dunya is a trial and tribulation. If you live it rich, you're still going to be tried on the day of judgment. You live it poor, you're still going to be tried on the day of judgment. Of course. And it's only just a few years before we all pass on. And the only thing that's going to benefit you is how much did you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how much did you do to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah. That was a, an amazing closing. Inshallah, we'll, we'll stop there. Give us your feedback. And inshallah, if we didn't get to some of the questions, forgive us. The discussion was really deep, even though the Sheikh answered many, many of the questions in the process of other uh, questions or discussions. So inshallah, we'll stay tuned. This has been like a, a three-part series. Make sure you watch part one, part two, and then this is the last uh, part three of the kind of the relationship series which are really some foundational things that you must know and that's what we're all about Dean love here loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loving yourself and loving each other one of the read. greatest yeah read for read. Sure. read just do your homework yeah do your homework and that's why we say we need a bachelor's okay of course do your homework so you understand what needs to be taught of so course. you can have a proper relationship oh yeah it's a long-term commitment you oh, have yeah. to spend some time researching and, and reading. SubhanAllah. Jazakallah khairan, Shaykh. May Allah reward you for we've been bothering you and kind of bombarding no, you. He said you have plenty of tough I questions. I said I'm doing this for my kids. I didn't even know what your questions were. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, um, yeah, reward all of you, and inshallah, and all of us, um, and that we are doing this for his sake, inshallah. Amen, Shaykh. Jazakallah khairan. Shaykh, I'll see you guys next time. Jazakallah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabina wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.